are being joined by Fenway World Champion Juan Archuleta. Oh, thank you. It's on the win. Um, sitting up there with your belt, champion of the world. How does that feel? Uh, say that one more time. Champion of the world. One more time. Champion of the world. Oh, my God. The Reconquista is back, man. The fighting Spanish are here. Uh, we're known to conquer. And um, in there with uh, Apache Mix, a valid, valid uh, opponent, you know, I, he gave me all I could handle. And I gave him a lot more than he could handle. And I'm, I'm here, man. I'm here to stay. I'm here to uh, dominate and conquer the 135 division, uh, what, no matter who it is. And talk to me about the, you know, how the fight progressed. Was that kind of what you were expecting out of him? Obviously, uh, you both were, were throwing a lot on the feet, and it was, it was a pretty exciting fight. There's an old saying that people say, young, dumb, and full of cum, and that's what uh, Apache Mix was, you know. And uh, we knew he was going to go out there, blow his wad in the first round, and uh, it was like, okay, stay composed, uh, keep your calm. Uh, keep cool, keep collective. I'm the veteran. I've, I've been here before, and uh, this time I wasn't going to go go home without it. For sure, man. And uh, talk to me a little bit about your post-fight speech. Obviously, you, you know, you talked about where you came from and your people. Um, how important is it for you to represent them on the, the big stage? I think it's important for everyone, you know, to realize where they do come from. Uh, United States right now is struggling with who they are. We're the United States. We're united, and we all come from different places in this world. And, uh, I'm not afraid to show who I am. I'm not re afraid to represent who I am, and neither should they. This is what our platform's for, is to represent who you are, and don't forget who your ancestors are, whether good or bad. You have the decision to, to, to change that, and I'm here to change, change that on my family. You know, we, we came we, and we conquered, but we also civilized here with uh, my other side of my family, the, the, the natives, and, uh, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be a United States and I'm proud no matter what. And you also gave a big shout out to uh, your training partner, Cub Swanson, who was in your corner tonight. Can you just talk about that a little bit and, and how he's impacted your career? Yeah, man, our team, uh, as you can see, is full of adversity. We got, you know, Cub Swanson, he should, he, he, there's, there's no greater role model to follow than Cub Swanson. He's been there. He should have title fights. He should have had this, should have had that. And you know what? He never complained. He always shows up ready to fight and ready to perform in front of the fans. And when I had excuses because I lost my title fight, he said, buck up, be a man, own your loss, and go out there and keep fighting because that's why we fight. And so, you know, huge shout out to him. Huge shout out to TJ Dillashaw being able to keep me, to keep my composure, stay strong, stay training. Uh, we have battles, you know, me and him. If you see us in the gym, you think we're two Tasmanian devils, you know, with Cub in there, myself, uh, TJ. We go in there and we scrap every day. And you know what? We love each other, man. I was so emotional being able to hug them and be able to show them that our hard work had paid off. And, you know, there's a new there's a, there's a new, new champion in town at the 135 division, and that's me across the world, across the board. One, uh, the body work throughout the fight was phenomenal, multi-punch combinations, all this stuff. Was that always a game plan going into this fight, play the long game, work the body, and you knew with your experience and his lack of experience and his step up in competition, it was going to be your fight three for fourth, fifth round? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, the whole game plan was dictated off Cub Swanson's fight with with Cron Gracie mixed with my manager Tiki. He's a great uh, uh, stand up fighter, kickboxing, Muay Thai. And we just worked on beating the angle on the southpaw. TJ Dillashaw adding the switch steps. And you've seen a little bit of everyone in my, in my fighting style. Joe Daddy Stevenson, his grappling style, Paul Herrera, Daryl Christian, his wrestling. I mean, usually he dominates guys over and under over. And uh, with Daryl Christian, uh, who used to work with a lot of guys out of San Diego and now works with us, uh, I was able to. No uh, um, nullify his 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 clinch game, and that's all thanks to him. Even his takedowns, I was able to defend it. Uh, being able to wrestle with guys at St. John Bosco and being able to outperform people. I'm a Purdue wrestler. I'm a Division One athlete. Like, and I had to go out there and act like it. A big star in the last in your fight with Patricia for the title was the last minute change where TJ was not in your corner. How big of a difference was it to have him in your corner for this title fight? Was it was it big? I mean, he's honestly uh, a, a firecracker uh, for me. You know, he, he's a guy that goes in there and lights the fuse for me and able to let me go out there and blow up. You know, let me go. When you when you have a champion in your corner that's been there and that's uh, been walking through those steps, when you have veterans in your sport and 
people who corner uh, who corner you that actually fought in the UFC, fought in the MMA, fought in all these organizations. You have full belief belief in whatever they say and you're going to do whatever they say they play me like a video game and i'm out there they call something i'll take a second and the guy's like forget and i seen him oh oh he's going to do this and then he forgot i was going to do it and then i it's still stuck in my head then i do it and and it plays well so you know f full thanks to my corner uh, i wish i was able to have joe daddy stevenson here but you know unfortunately the commission they only allowed me three corners congratulations juan Thank i asked about that soccer kick uh, that you went for did uh when Justin Herzog stopped it, I saw you had some words of him. Can you just talk about that whole and a whole? Uh well, if you see my fights with William Joplin and other fights, you know, and he's doing his job, like great job on the referee, like. I'm a guy that makes the referee do his job. Like, if he if he says it was illegal, I'm like, okay, but please rewatch it. Like, I thought I got poked in my eye, and he said, no, you got punched in the eye. I was like, okay, I thought it was a finger. I apologize, uh, but you know. Uh, William Joplin, same thing. As he came up, I threw a soccer kick and it landed and his hand was off the mat. And same thing with him. I, I, I throw it in practice just because I know in real life I'm going to throw it. And I don't throw it hard in practice, but it's practice. You know, perfect pra uh, practice makes perfect. And uh, with Bellator doing all these shows in Europe, uh, any chance you can convince Scott Coker? Oh, yeah. that, that was a that was a whole um reason getting this belt and uh representing my people is to go out there in spain uh put a performance on it from the king and queen and go into these soccer fields with all these soccer players and if they could fill up a soccer uh, um arena we could fill up a fight venue from the internet john hi Juan. congratulations on the win thank you sir uh, so I want to know what was the mindset like in between uh, rounds two and three there? Obviously, you know, you were down two nothing on the scorecards there. Did you know that you had to step it up a bit or were you kind of planned that he was going to start to fade there and that you were going to start picking him apart in those rounds? Yeah, you know, he he's never really lost a round. And uh, the whole idea was, hey, just pick, touch, touch, and pick him apart. Of course, a couple of times I overswing and he took my back and he got some takedowns. But hey, we fight through adversity. We're fighters. Uh, you know, we're born with the gift, all of us, you know, whether it be journalism, whether it be construction worker. For me, it's fighting and performing, and it's going out there making a big drama show, a uh, Triple G style, big drama show. And that's what I gave the uh, fans. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Hey, Juan, congratulations on the win tonight. Have you thought much about what uh, being champ and holding the belt is going to be like now? Because you've been chasing this for a while. Now you're going to have the target on your back. Absolutely. TJ Dillashaw and Dwayne Ludwig, uh, before the uh, Patricio Pitbull fight, told me there's a responsibility of being a champion. And, uh, you know, they've, they've coached me through it. And I know what's, what's ahead. And I'm excited for the responsibility, the responsibility it takes to be a champion. Congrats again. Hi, um, congratulations on your victory. Um, as your new champion, you will possibly face the former champion, Kyoji Horiguchi, in the future. I know you called him out once, but uh, what is your impression of him? And if the fight is materialized, which part of your game do you feel you should improve in to make sure to beat him? Horiguchi! I'm still coming for you, baby. Where you at? I hope you're ready, Horiguchi. I want that fight, baby. I want that risen bell. Let's go. Oh, that's awesome. And also, um, the partnership between Beato and Rising gives you another Japanese potential opponent uh, who is a current Rising Bantamweight champion, Kaya Sakura, who actually knocked out Horiguchi once. So tell me your impression about Sakura and uh, are you in interested in going to Japan and unifying the title, just like you know, Darian Caldwell tried to do? The Dice team and Scott Cooker and my manager, Tiki Gosen, is going to make it happen. Special shout out to the Dice team. Thank, thank you guys for the love and support. Uh, yes, it's going to happen. You will see me in Japan. It's going to be just like this. Uh, but first things first, uh, true champion defends his belt. And, uh, and uh, I'm a conquistador. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to dominate the 135 division all around the world. Thank you.